So, hello cameras. Today we will speak about uh, very um, stupid things which was taking place in Poland in 9 of May. There was a cat attack, uh, Russophobic in all the Poland. Uh, the most important is, of course, the attack for the Russian ambassador in the uh, cemetery of the Soviet soldiers in Warsaw. But there was also the attack for the uh, school for the Russian diplomat in Warsaw in the same day. In the same day in Gdańsk, there was also the attack for the consul of Russia, uh, also in the cemetery of the Soviet soldiers. And uh, there was also attack for the Polish people, for the Polish uh, politician, Polish leftists, who wanted to give flowers to in the tomb of the Soviet soldiers. Uh, there was uh, uh, our guest today, Mateusz Piskorski, who wanted to give flowers in this day. So, uh, so hello, Mateusz. Uh, maybe firstly, I will show uh, some video uh, about this e event uh, which you participated. It is not video with you. It is video with Tomasz Jankowski because you were together in this day. Uh, so uh, we can watch this video together a few seconds. Organizator, nie jestem w stanie zabezpieczyć takich osób. Fasyści! Proszę opuścić miejsce zgromadzenia. Proszę, proszę opuścić miejsce zgromadzenia. Jako organizator. Okej, okay, I think that. Uh... So, tell me what's happened. Well, From your... we had. Uh... Uh, let's say several cases of uh, law violations of uh, fierce violent attacks on uh, people who wanted to commemorate the 77th anniversary of uh, the great victory in the second world war we had uh, several provocations uh, organized by uh, well very strange people uh, on the one hand those people were quite well organized and uh, financed. We see that, uh, you can see also on the photos you uh, present here that uh, there were a lot of uh, flags, a lot of banners, a lot of billboards even standing uh, near the cemetery, near the military, Soviet cemetery in Warsaw, in the center of the city almost. Then we had, uh, you know, the amplifiers, uh, the whole, uh, sound systems uh, put there so it was very well organized the people who stood behind that uh, were according to some invest investigative journalists uh, connected to soros foundations on the one hand but on the other hand they were using uh, openly and publicly the neo-nazi uh, symbols uh, neo-nazi uh, songs uh, singing the songs of uh, ukrainian Nazis uh, from the times of the Second World War and so on. Yes? So this is another example of this strange uh, mix uh, between uh, the neoliberal Soros-like uh, uh, circles and the neo-Nazis in Ukraine. This is quite exotic at the first glance, but uh, it's a kind of neoliberal Nazism or neoliberal neo-Nazism. Uh, most of those people you see here on the, on the pictures, uh, it's, it's good that you present the pictures uh, here, uh, well, you can see here quite young people. Those young people were uh, financially, according to our knowledge, financially motivated, so they were paid for coming there. This is not a spontaneous protest. This is not a spontaneous demonstration. Uh, as we all know, since uh, the times of uh, several Maidans in Kiev, in Ukraine and in Ukrainian uh, politics, everything is commercialized which means that also the people from Ukraine coming with their children, you know, coming with uh, some youngsters, coming with uh, the women and so on, are just paid for coming there and for disturbing the uh, commemorative uh, events uh, on the 9th of May in Warsaw and in other cities as well. So well-organized, well-paid, 
Uh, and uh, what's the most important now, uh, you have also you have also shown uh, showed the pictures of the ambassador Siegi Andreev, the Russian ambas ambassador to Warsaw. So I would like to explain a few few things about him. Every year, the Russian embassy in uh, Warsaw organizes, since several years, uh, organizes the commemoration day, the Victory Day, on the 9th of May. Different people come there. Uh, not only the Russians, not only the representatives of the Russian minority, but also the representatives of other uh, embassies of the post-Soviet countries and also ordinary Polish uh, citizens uh, commemorating the Victory Day. Usually uh, around 100 to 150 people are gathering at the commemoration uh, ceremony organized by the embassy. This year, uh, the Russian embassy has also announced their plan to organize the Victory Day at the military cemetery in uh, Warsaw, at the cemetery where, uh, well, there are about 24,000 uh, of uh, uh, Red Army soldiers buried, uh, the victims of, of, the, of the Second World War. Uh, but uh, immediately, I mean, it was on Friday, the commemoration day was on Monday, uh, but on Friday the ambassador called me that they got a letter from uh, the Polish Ministry of Foreign Affairs advising them, advising them not to organize the event because of the current political situation, which means, of course, the conflict in uh, Ukraine, the Russian special operation in Ukraine. Uh, so uh, the ambassador, after after this pressure made by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, made by the president, the mayor of uh, Warsaw, Rafał Czeskowski, a, a neoliberal politician, as well as uh, some uh, members of the government of the neoconservative Law and Justice Party, which means uh, first and foremost, uh, Mariusz Kamiński and his people in the Ministry of uh, Interior. Uh, so after they have announced that there will be no police security and no police guarantees, security guarantees on place on the 9th of May, the ambassador decided not to risk, although he, he has uh, underlined, uh, underlined and stressed that uh, this is not about him and his safety, but this is about the safety of the people who are coming to commemorate the Victory Day. So he passed me the information, uh, he called me as well and told me that, uh, well, he uh, will not organize anything official, but he personally is going to visit the cemetery together with, with his wife, just to put the flowers at 12 o'clock on uh, Monday on the Victory Day. Uh, he publicly announced that there are no official events, organized events uh, by the Russian embassy on that day because of the political pressure of the Polish authorities. Nevertheless, he also publicly announced that he is going to come privately with his wife at 12 o'clock just to put the flowers there. Yes. So uh, all those people who are gathering there knew that he will come and of course all, also the police perfectly knew that the ambassador will come and uh, the police because i was a little bit earlier there on place the police uh, couldn't uh, couldn't uh, not notice the presence of about 200 300 aggressive people standing there at the entrance to the cemetery so it was quite obvious that the police was told not to intervene on that day so it was quite obvious, uh, even more, when uh, together with Tomasz Jankowski, a friend of, and comrade of mine, uh, we personally heard the walkie-talkies of, of the policemen, uh, where one of the, I think that someone from, uh, from the commanders of the, of the Warsaw Police was announcing after the attack on the ambassador that what was supposed to happen has already happened. This was uh, these were the words we have heard on the walkie-talkie of the of the policeman standing nearby. Yes, which uh, shows uh, without any doubt that the whole operation was planned because the police was somewhere nearby. Uh, they came to the place just 15 minutes after uh, the ambassador had been attacked. So uh, it was an organized 
and planned provocation. I think that the Polish authorities knew that the ambassador will be attacked. Maybe they uh, didn't know the details of the attack, yes, but uh, concerning the fact that among uh, those people standing there and protesting there and shouting, you know, all those neo-fascist uh, neo uh, slogans and words, there were some people, let's say, uh, mentally, mentally disposed, mentally uh, disaffected, yes. So uh, imagine what could have happened, yes, and imagine that, uh, well, I myself, I have seen some people mentally ill, uh, they're uh, known for, for several people in, in Poland because uh, these actually were the Polish guys. Uh, but those people uh, mentally diseased uh, could, uh, well, really kill the ambassador even, yes? So it was quite realistic that someone could be killed there because there was no police at the moment. So the organizers, I mean the Polish politicians, uh, uh, let's say giving the orders to, to the police, to the Warsaw police, probably knew that something will happen. They might not knew what exactly is going to happen. Well, and it happened. And it happened uh, uh, raising the international scandal, which is uh, quite, uh, quite obvious because, uh, well, it is the first time in the history of contemporary Poland when an ambassador of a foreign country was uh, physically attacked on our territory. By the way, not by the Polish people, but by uh, the foreigners, by the so-called refugees from Ukraine, and actually by the well-paid uh, protesters uh, of participating in the organized mass provocation uh, in Warsaw on the 9th of May. So this was, of course, the, the, the first event of that day. That's not all, of course. There were several other attacks. Uh, there were several other mm, uh, scandals on the on the same day. Uh, the ambassador, uh, let's let's come back to the to the cemetery, to the military cemetery on the 9th of May in Warsaw. The ambassador decided, of course, after he was attacked, and uh, you know, uh, they they threw the paint, the red paint, on him, as you as you can see and notice on the pictures. So. After mm, uh, that attack, uh, I called the ambassador and he told me that he's already in the car, he's safe, he's driving back to the embassy because, uh, uh, let's say that putting the flowers there, it's, it's not possible anymore, it, well, it was quite obvious. Uh, then we saw that suddenly the police is coming, so they were quite near, as I told. Uh, and then we just decided uh, to go individually, there were three of us at that moment, me, Tomasz Jankowski and Mikołaj Reiser, another comrade. Uh, we decided just to put the uh, white, uh, white uh, red uh, flowers in the national colors of, of the national flag of Poland uh, to the monu monument on the, on the cemetery, yes. We uh, tried to do that. Uh, we, we were trying to pass those people, the, this, this aggressive uh, protesters there with the Ukrainian flags. But we were then blocked by them and then attacked, physically attacked by them. So, so they have destroyed the flowers we had with us. Uh, they have, uh, uh, well, uh, physically also attacked uh, us. Fortunately, there are no serious injuries, although some other people were injured by, by the so-called protesters. And, uh, well, uh, when we asked the police, who was already there, as I told, uh, to identify the most brutal and violent protesters, uh, and I was given two policemen who went with me to uh, identify the, uh, the protesters. Uh, and uh, can you imagine that even the policemen who were coming with me were attacked by this aggressive group of people, yes. So, uh, can you imagine? You, you have you have seen a lot of. I mean, uh, Michal, you have seen a lot of protests in Poland, like uh, the miners, the farmers, and so on and so on. Yes. So, in any normal case, if if it would be about uh, the Polish citizens, yes, uh, trying to block or trying to attack a policeman, an acting policeman. 
would be a serious crime and such a guy, a miner, a protester, a trade unionist, a farmer, would be immediately detained and arrested because this is perceived as a serious crime uh, which uh, for which you can get uh, from one up to ten years of prison of imprisonment. Yes, and I think that if it is the American ambassador, they will arrest uh, uh, 50 people. Uh, of course, of course, in, of course, in five minutes. Of course, without any doubt. Uh, so, but I'm talking here also about the fact that uh, they are attacking. They are already. They they feel so. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, free here when it comes to breaking the law and breaking all the rules, that they even uh, that, that they even uh, don't care about uh, the policemen, and that they even are ready to attack the policemen. I mean, those protesters which we are talking about here, which means that they were informed by the organizers of uh, the whole protest, by the sponsors of the whole protest, that there are arrangements with the Polish authorities that nothing will happen to them because they were recording all of that. Uh, this woman was also recording herself. Can you imagine? Uh, she was one of the people attacking the ambassador, by the way. And uh, everybody knew who uh, course, course, they, they name and nobody exactly. arrested her. And nobody arrested her. And uh, as far as I know, she hasn't been detained up, detained up to now. So no, nobody even interrogated her. She is, you know, uh, outside. This is the second time because one month ago she organized the illegal protest in the Polish Belarusian border. Yes, yes, yes. The 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 the, the truck, Polish truck. Yes, exactly, work. exactly. So, so this is the second time in uh, in the last uh, few weeks that uh, she is violating the Polish law and nothing happens. Uh, which means that those people are acting uh, uh, within a framework of coordination between uh, probably SBU, the Ukrainian uh, neo-Nazi uh, secret police, uh, and uh, some uh, Polish security structures. This is, this is my thesis, of course, I, I cannot prove that for the moment being, but uh, it comes to my mind as something which uh, which is quite obvious yes uh, so these people are under security umbrella and uh, these people uh, well now they have uh, organized this provocation in Warsaw on the 9th of may uh, next time next time uh, we, we cannot exclude that they will kill someone or or commit even more serious crimes yes not only against the russians not only against the diplomats but the, the most, uh, I would say, shocking fact for many people here in Poland is that, that it appears that uh, if you are a Polish citizen, you, uh, you are wearing, uh, you, you, are, you, are, you are taking with you the flowers, uh, the Polish national flag and so on, you also might be attacked by those people, by those people who are claiming that they are refugees here in Poland, who are claiming that they are escaping the war and so on and so on. Of course, I would like you to, to, to understand me correctly. I'm not criticizing the refugees as a whole because I personally help the refugees, the Ukrainian refugees. I mean, the women with children and so on. I think that the most uh, reasonable step when it comes to the Ukrainians also when it comes to the men, young men living in Ukraine, is to get, get out of the country uh, because otherwise they, they might be used uh, by, by the regime to, 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 to fight this bloody war and uh, otherwise they, they, they simply might be killed. So I welcome all the Ukrainians, not only women with children, but also, but also the men. But uh, I think that there is a small group of people who are, well, organizing and uh, sponsoring and paying events like that, which might lead, and this is very important, uh, if you look at it from the internationalist point of view, uh, this might lead to uh, ethnic violence, ethnically, nationally uh, motivated violence in Poland. Why? Because uh, if uh, the Ukrainians will be, let's say, uh, perceived as people who 
don't have to observe the law uh, in Poland, as people who have more privileges and can uh, even physically attack without any consequences, physically attack uh, the diplomats, uh, the Polish citizens, ordinary Polish citizens, sooner or later we will have uh, the Polish nationalist answer towards the uh, Ukrainians and the Ukrainian problem as such. So people who uh, let them doing that, uh, who let them behave like that, uh, are actually anti-Ukrainian and they are preparing the ground for uh, ethnic unrest and uh, ethnic conflicts on the streets of the Polish cities. This is the problem because, as I say, sooner or later, you will see, I think it will be in the coming months, sooner or later we will have uh, ethnic confrontations, physical confrontations on the ethnic ground uh, in Poland because of what we have seen and because of uh, what the some small part of the Ukrainians is doing in Poland. I think that it is very important what you say that it was uh, that it is minority because we need to remind that before war started there was already one million Ukrainians in Poland and now uh, after uh, there are three million more so so th there are four million Ukrainians in Poland so uh, in uh, 200 or 300 people in Warsaw uh, compared to 4 million, it is extremal minority and uh, extremal minority as you as in these photos we see that uh, the i don't know half of these people the this the, the children it is children uh, there are some people the children i don't know seven eight years old uh, not more so so this is the most radical force it is people manipulated very young who are not working because most of these ukrainians who are in poland they are working working very very hard they don't have they don't have time to to uh, to things like this uh, because uh, okay so i have another question for you um, now about uh, about uh, wait 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 um, because this action which you said was organized by the um, by the ukrainians and here in this photo we see the russian consul in gdansk and he is attacked not by the ukrainians maybe there there are ukrainians but the most aggressive person in this demonstration is the member of polish parliament uh, deputy the new left new left so you see the the most aggressive force of nato in poland this is the social democrat this is this woman could you say something about this well, uh, we have already discussed several times, and you are discussing also with your guests uh, here about, uh, let's say, the so-called uh, new left or or the so-called left represented in the Polish parliament. Yes, as you see, this is not the left. I mean, uh, the left all all around Europe, not only not only uh, in uh, Poland, not only in. in Eastern part of, of Europe, but all around Europe, as we perfectly know, and you perfectly know, and our uh, and uh, our audience knows, uh, is uh, commemorating the uh, Great Victory Day on the 9th of May. Is participating in uh, all the events organized to commemorate the victims of uh, the Third Reich and the victors, the victorious Red Army, uh, who. Uh, well, actually uh, saved Europe from uh, several nations of Europe, uh, giving them the possibility to biologically and physically exist. Yes. So and this is something very obvious for the left. The woman you can see here is not the left, of course. I mean, they are calling themselves the left. The woman uh, uh, whom you can see here is, uh, well, let's say a very primitive, uh, nationalist far right when it comes to to, to the reactions uh, she makes so this is quite uh, by the way it, uh, quite quite it's quite hilarious and uh, exotic that in poland uh, the so-called left behaves as the very far right 
very far anti-communist, uh, far right in uh, other European countries. Uh, I don't think we should anymore talk about the left uh, when we talk about uh, the people, the primitive uh, people and uh, group of bunch of provocators and neoliberals who are sitting in the Polish parliament. There's no left in the Polish parliament. They call themselves left, yes, but but that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean anything, yes. In this particular case, I, by the way, I can understand that uh, several people, me myself too, I'm 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 an opponent of and, and a critic of war as such. Yes, I'm for the peaceful solutions and so on and so on. I can understand people that uh, they are quite critical towards uh, Russia and 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 the whole thing which is happening now, the operation which is happening now in Ukraine. Uh, in democracy, it's their right to, to, to have their own uh, opinion about that. It's quite obvious for me. But a cemetery is not a place, and the 9th of May is not a place to demonstrate uh, their opinions and demonstrate them in, in such a way, uh, in such a primitive, aggressive way, uh, about what's, 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 happening in, what's happening now in Ukraine. Uh, to this stupid uh, pseudo-left uh, MP, I would just uh, recommend to find out that uh, when it comes to the great victory and to the Red Army, uh, according to most of the historians, around one and a half million of Ukrainians fighting in the ranks of Red Army against the Third Reich had died. One and a half million soldiers. So this is also uh, victory day for the Ukrainians. I, I'm not talking about a small group of uh, fascist collaborators, uh, which were also, of course, present in the western regions of Ukraine, but I'm talking about the majority of Ukrainians. For Ukrainians, for Poles, for uh, thousands of other nations who are fighting uh, the Third Reich, also in the ranks of the Red Army, uh, you can uh, tell that this is the most important uh, day when it comes to all the commemorative uh, celebrations uh, connected to the Second World War. Ukrainians, by numbers, were the second largest group within the ranks of the Red Army in 1944-45. So this is the thing we can we should also remember about. And uh, this uh, primitive, stupid uh, woman who is, uh, well, uh, creating a shameful situation for the whole Polish parliament. I'm not talking about the left because we have already told that this is not the left. Actually, they just call themselves and pretend to be left. She, uh, well, she, she is trying to do everything to, uh, let's say, uh, make all the people abroad, not only in Russia, but I think that also in other countries, uh, people have a deep understanding what is the 9th of May and so on, to make them think that Pol Poland is a kind of barbaric country with uh, the neo-fascist far-right uh, views represented on the parliamentary level. Okay, so um, unfortunately it is not finished because this day was very um, uh, full of the uh, Russia phobia uh, in, in Poland. Here uh, we see the uh, photo of the school for the Russian diplomats. And this school also this day, few hours, uh, a few hours after when ambassador was attacked, uh, some people came to this school, they crossed uh, this... Uh, uh, this, uh, this, I don't know, this port, or uh, uh, they go inside, they make this painture, and uh, also they, uh, uh, there is a danger. I, I can't imagine, uh, I can imagine that somebody are not agree with the politic of the Russia, and he protests uh, towards the. Uh, adult uh, adult politician like ambassador or the consul of the russia but i can't imagine why they attacked the children well 
this is very uh, very obvious and uh, i would say that uh, if uh, well if you permit all the aggressive attacks uh, the attacks phys physical attacks uh, here in poland they feel that they can do that and uh, they ask themselves uh, why not to do that if uh, they are alleged to do that here in Poland and, and if uh, no one has anything against that, yes? So, uh, this is the object, this is the compound of the Russian embassy. Officially, this is a diplomatic territory in the center of Warsaw. There's a school where actually not only the Russian children are attending to the school, but also the children of uh, the diplomats of other post-Soviet countries. I know perfectly this school. I, I was several times uh, in the building of the school. Uh, it's also uh, very attractive for some Polish citizens, for some uh, Polish children who are attending uh, this school because they want to know the Russian culture, the Russian language and so on. Uh, so, uh, well, this is... Uh, I cannot elaborate on, on that very, very long because uh, uh, this is uh, just a you know, another example of barbarism. Uh, by the way, this is uh, the location of, of the school is in the center, in the center of Warsaw. So you have uh, the cameras, the monitoring uh, all around. And uh, it's not a problem to establish who, who was uh, trying to violate the law and to attack the school. This is uh, something which could be possible within a few hours. Uh, but I have also not heard about any people detained for this brutal uh, assault on the school. Okay, so um, so now I, I would like to ask you, do you think that uh, it was... Uh, uh, it was organized by the... Uh, only by the it was spontaneous organization organized by the ukrainian refugees or it was uh, supported by the polish secret service or american secret service uh, could uh, could you say something about uh, the word of the minister kaminski what he said about it and what will be the future of the uh, diplomatic relation poland with russia and also diplomatic relation Poland with another country because in this example we see that Poland uh, is not capable to to uh, respect the international law yes of course uh, the Minister of Interior uh, Kaminski uh, you have mentioned him already uh, announced that uh, we have to understand the reactions the emotional reactions of uh, the people gathered there and uh, of the people attacking the Russian ambassador. That, that were his words. And this is the guy who is uh, responsible for the police. This is the guy who is uh, responsible for the security here in Poland. Which means that uh, he uh, openly and publicly, uh, let's say, uh, justifies and uh, calls for the understanding of people who are breaking the law. This is quite exotic, but it's not so exotic if you look at uh, this guy, at Kaminski. Uh, he's a far-right activist from the 90s. He's a guy who organized uh, the so-called Republican League, a small group, a uh, militant group in the 90s, which uh, was uh, notorious for uh, attacking uh, different people whom they perceived as communists. Uh, this is a, one of the most extremist, I mean, he used to, to be the leader of one of the most extremist organizations uh, in Poland uh, when it comes to the 90s. I remember myself the, the uh, brutal attacks and uh, provocations organized by the Republican League at that time. Then he, uh, just, just to, to understand it for our, for our viewers uh, and our audience uh, from outside Poland, the same guy, the Minister of Interior, uh, in uh, uh, 2007 organized a criminal provocation using the secret services to oust then Deputy Prime Minister and leader of the popular movement uh, self-defense, Andrzej Leper. 
Uh, he organized a provocation by uh, pretending that there is a corruption case within the ministry and he tried to arrest the acting minister by uh, producing fake uh, evidence uh, about corruption. He was, by the way, sentenced to three years of prison uh, by the court for organizing this provocation about Andrzej Lepe and against Andrzej Lepe. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the acting president, his uh, party colleague, uh, Andrzej Duda, uh, has, uh, well, uh, freed him from any uh, criminal uh, responsibility. So, uh, for the moment being, we have a guy who was sentenced to three years of prison, who used to be a far-right radical militant, as a minister of interior. So this is shocking for many people. And uh, that's why the guys like him uh, don't care about anything. I, I can also stress here one, let's say, personal moment that this is the guy whose people, uh, well, arrested me and kept me for three years without uh, giving any evidence of committing any, any crime, but just for my political views in prison. Yes, so this is, this is uh, the political far right political milieu in Poland, uh, which is uh, actually supporting the violent acts traditionally yes, as as far right militant, militants. Uh, so nothing strange uh, when it comes to that. If we have such uh, interior minister, when it comes to the future relations. Uh, and when it comes to the authors of this provocation, what I'm sure about uh, is that this was an organized, well-sponsored and funded action. This is not an action which was made, sp uh, organized spontaneously by some refugees. Actually, the main people there who could, uh, who, who, whom, whom you could not notice there, also the woman, uh, you, you have, you have uh, presented her picture, the woman who attacked the ambassador, those people are not the refugees, they are living in Poland since several years. They, they come from Ukraine, they, they are Ukrainian citizens, but they are not the refugees who came within the last few months, yes? They live here, uh, they, uh, uh, they are funded by the grants from the structures and foundations of George Soros and so on and so on. So they are quite active since several years in Poland. That's why, if you ask me who is behind all of, all of that, I would say that I'm sure that uh, the organizations funded by Soros and other uh, globalists are behind that. Uh, I'm also sure that uh, this is not without the knowledge of uh, the security service of Ukraine, SBU, the uh, secret police of the current uh, Ukrainian regime, because they are coordinating their activities. Uh, and when it comes to Poland, uh, of course, I might guess that uh, uh, the Polish, uh, the Polish people, the Polish, uh, uh, I mean, the Polish guys, the Polish uh, people from the government, uh, probably accepted uh, that what has happened. I don't know if they have participated in organizing and preparing of all of that. Yes, so I, I cannot say. Nevertheless, they are from the point of view of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations and so on, they are responsible for what is happening here in Poland. Not the SBU, not Soros, but they, uh, the Polish government, are uh, responsible for guaranteeing security, not only not only for the ambassador, but also for their own citizens like me and uh, Tomasz Jankowski, who were attacked uh, at the commemoration day. Yes? So uh, this is the point, I think. And uh, when it comes to my future prognosis, I'm, re I'm really glad that the Russian reaction uh, was quite moderate. Because, you know, uh, of course, for the moment being, our diplomatic relations, Polish-Russian diplomatic relations, are only official, as Ambassador Andreev uh, called it, uh, the Russian ambassador to Poland. Uh, but I think that uh, in any case, it's worth it to uh, somehow preserve this channel of diplomatic contact, I mean, to preserve the diplomatic presence, the Polish one in Moscow and the uh, Russian one in uh, Warsaw, uh, for the future. Uh, because uh, for our own safety, 
uh, for for the matters which might appear, for the problems which might occur in the future, uh, we should still uh, be glad that uh, we still have diplomatic relations because there was a serious threat that the diplomatic relations could be ceased after what has happened on the 9th of May. Uh, I'm glad, by the way, uh, you can believe me that uh, I'm not supportive for anyone in the current Polish government. Nevertheless, the only Polish minister who acted as a minister, not as a, a far-right militant, when it comes to his statements, was uh, Minister Zbigniew Rau, who condemned uh, the attack on the on the Russian ambassador. Because I think that Rau, as a minister of uh, uh, foreign affairs, uh, understands uh, perfectly that uh, it's not in, in our interest to break all the, all the relations with, with Moscow. Hopefully, hopefully nothing uh, worse than that, which has already happened in uh, on the on the 9th of May, will not happen in the coming months. But uh, it's only a slight a little hope because. Uh, uh, you know, observing the things which are happening now in Poland makes me makes me more and more pessimistic. Okay, thank you. It's not good that uh, that the conclusion is pessimistic, but it is. Uh, there is a lot of things pessimistic in Poland. Uh, there is the uh, propaganda of the media, there is the inflation, the rising of prices. Uh, I suppose that uh, in the near future, because of the, uh, the problem with gas, there will be also the problem, uh, big economic problems for the Polish people. There are the problem for the people, uh, for the paying the... the um, a mortgage uh, uh, because now the the rates are two two times bigger so uh, a lot of a lot of problems for poland and also the in the same time the european union i don't know if you are uh, uh, if you if you uh, uh, heard about the, the, the speech of the Macron and the Ursula von der Leyen in the same time in the same day May, 9 of May they push the reform of the European Union uh, and this reform it will be finished of the some uh, so-called uh, autonomy of small states like Poland Hungary which this state can can uh, uh, make veto for something now it's finished because everything will be voted by the majority so we see that poland which is the most aggressive force against russia now is betrayed by the by the western state of the european union so it's totally isolated uh, aggressive media propaganda economic crisis so, and uh, so very very bad situation Yes, of course, I think it's uh, another quite interesting topic to be discussed. Uh, that, uh, well, when it comes to what we see now, according to my opinion, I will not elaborate on that because we don't have time anymore. Nevertheless, according to my opinion, it's a kind of, uh, you know, practical realization of Wolfowitz's uh, doctrine from 1991 which means that uh, the Anglo-Saxon capitalist uh, world is trying to uh, finally destroy not only Eurasia or to weaken Eurasia, but also Europe, I mean, continental Europe. Yes? So this is, this is also the matter here. Uh, the future of uh, Europe and of Eurasia is at stake here. And uh, if they are going, if they are going to, to, to uh, continue that if they are going to succeed in that uh, very very soon the whole Europe Poland and uh, Central Europe particularly will give, will become a kind of uh, you know world uh, periphery if uh, if if we use the terms of Immanuel Wallerstein yes uh, so this is the main goal actually this is the main goal of the Anglo-Saxon uh, axis of uh, Washington and London of the capitalist heartland of the contemporary world. So I will read uh, a few comments here. 
thank you Tavazusu for inviting such interesting guests so it's about you and there is also the comment uh, Igor uh, Igor is Odessy приветствую друзья из Odessy победим украинский nazism в месте uh, so hello friends uh, from Odessa we will win the Nazis if, if you let me tell a few words to mm. Igor uh, in uh, Russian uh, just just a few words uh, Igor берегите себя а то мы понимаем где вы находитесь поэтому у вас еще сложнее чем чем здесь у нас но победа будет за нами Thank you. Just a few words that uh, we are keeping our fingers and we are uh, calling Igor as all other comrades in Odessa to be careful because uh, we know what the conditions are, in what conditions they are living now every day. Okay, thank you.